much for coming uh, today. I did just want to address our issues with our streaming show last week. I wanted to address any concerns that anybody had, but I also wanted to make sure that I let everybody know that we have indeed declared victory. <laughs> we are good to go for tonight. Through our tireless and comprehensive efforts, we have fixed everything. We are the best. We know exactly what to do. Mission accomplished. Well, I don't think there's much to be said or much to, to be asked here, but I'm happy to take some questions. Yes, Charlie, why don't you go ahead? Uh, yes. Thanks. Uh, as uh, Thick Paul Rudd mentioned last week, the echo in the stream was uh, real hard, uh, very distracting from the show itself. Uh, I was just wondering, do you take any responsibility for that? And uh, do you guarantee that's not going to happen again this week? No. No, Charlie. I don't take any responsibility at all. As I said uh, before, we've had limitations. Software issues, internets, Jeff Bezos, people that came before me, uh, setting setting restrictions on me where I couldn't do things the way that I would normally do them. No, no, I don't take any responsibility at all. People before me were to blame. Thank you. How about you, Bob? You just said a moment ago that you don't take responsibility, but you were the one to set up the stream. And you are the one running the software. Everyone who worked on that show said that you lost valuable stream time because you were set up properly. What do you make of that? Well, Bob, I think that's a nasty question. Why can't you ask it in a different way, Bob? Why, why, why instead of attacking me, why don't you say something like, Molly, uh, the streaming service has been great. Your shows have been amazing. Last week we couldn't see, watch, or enjoy any part of your show. But you're doing a great job. Do you see the difference there, Bob? Do you see that? That's called a compliment sandwich, Bob. Ask it in a different way next next time, okay? It's just nasty. For those of you who say that I did not do things properly, um, I would just like to remind you of how many millions and thousands of seconds I've saved you of watching bad streaming. I am not to blame. I do not take any responsibility. I don't know how many times I have to say how great I am. The military is great. The numbers are great. The people are great. Best in the world. Next question. Go ahead, Barb. You've said many times throughout this press conference that Last Best Comedy is the best in the world at streaming. And my question to you is, why does that matter if everyday citizens are unable to depend upon your streaming audio and video quality week to week? Why are you so concerned with the global competition of it all? Well, Barb, first thing I want to ask you is, is this a competition, Barb? Yes, it is. Are there hundreds of comedy theaters on streaming services like Twitch, Barb? Yes, there are. Does our streaming service need to be the best? Yes, it does, and it is. So that is why I worry about the, the competition, Barb. Okay? And, and also, uh, best in the world? That's right, best in the world. If you have a question for anybody, why don't you go ask Twitch? Yeah, or maybe ask China. I'm done here. Thanks. Enjoy the show, everyone. The perfect show. Welcome to the Quarantine Comedy Hour. We're streaming live around the world and beyond directly to your living room. There is no need to silence your cell phone or other mobile devices because you're at home. Please participate in the live chat throughout the show. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy. Now welcome your hosts, Annie and Levin! Say something funny. At that point, I'll be. Hey! Hey! <laughs> you like that bit where we're talking about something that we're going to do and then we get caught? Ah, <laughs> stock, stock can stuff. Safe. You put it in, it's like a can of beans in your pantry. You can keep it the whole quarantine. Subway sandwich. Gift certificate well, to Subway, Subway sandwiches, sandwich. You, some places you can't get them yet. No, it's true. <clears throat> and I read an article that some guy wearing like um, like a... A torpedo launcher went into the It was a rocket summer. launcher. It was yeah. also 
potentially just like a toy rocket launcher and he's just trying to get those libs riled up over of course you can't walk around with a rocket launcher i'm just a big dumb beefcake uh i'm just riling up libs in north carolina is this you that's what that guy that's oh that's if he w- he was thinking that. Oh, those are things he was thinking. Hey! Hey, intern G! It's our intern, Garrison, everybody. Welcome to the Quarantine Comedy Hour. This is Garrison. He's interning for us. What did you... What happened? With your intro? Yeah! Uh, Landon is in the cast now, and he's a professional. So he's we a just, professional we voice. Figured, a, you didn't... When I, when I accepted this... When I applied for this internship, you didn't tell me that... They were going to be professional. Listen to your voice. It's a, you need to smoke cigarettes or something. Yeah, your voice is so high. It's almost I have, I'm not doing I'm not doing my DJ voice right now. Smoke I'm more just... cigarettes. Drink more whiskey. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a voice Holy I could fuck to. God. I can I can do that. See? And we do. Smoke, Thank you, Landon. Thank you. Smoke Landon. more cigarettes. Drink more whiskey. Uh, See? That sounds like a child trying to You got a lot to learn, rookie. Oh, there I go again. Smoke Smoke more cigarette, drink more whiskey. Okay. Oh, That's get a bit of boy in there. In here. Boy. Very British. Get a bit in the bobby over up in here. A Russian kidnapper is pretending to do an English accent to throw me off, but I know he's Russian. Look, Eric, just... if you want to practice deepening your voice, do like some kegels for your throat. <clears throat> yeah, squeeze your kegels. Squeeze your kegels. Is it called kegels or kegels? Kankles. No, it's... Is it kegels or kegels? Put it to the house. Nobody Chat knows. Stream. Chat Kegel. stream. Kegel. <laughs> I believe yeah. it's kegel exercises. K? Drop some Ks in the chat room if it's kegels. And some uh, Qs if it's kegels. Why Qs? Because you got to differentiate. They're going to start pumping K's and K's. I hurt myself today. What is this? You hurt me. You did this. You hurt me. I didn't hurt me. Don't let this... Behind those dollar store glasses is a soul. Well... Uh, if you haven't already participated, we're going to give Garrison some time to work through his feelings and, uh, hopefully he's going to be pumping up the show with some sound effects. You need to take that mustache and turn it upside down. So it's a happy face mustache and then you'll be happy. But if you guys are not on the chat right now, you can go to twitch.tv backslash last best comedy if you're Mm -hmm. watching it on our site you can go to twitch tv you can log in and you can join the show by joining the chat i'm looking at the chat on this computer right over here so i can see i'm looking at you uh he's looking at you i'm looking at the chat so if you guys are talking to us we can see you can razz us you can ask questions whatever you want to do submit suggestions all the things uh this could be your time you can copy and paste a full sketch you've written into the chat room and maybe we'll use it next week if you guys haven't watched a quarantine comedy hour before this is a live streaming variety show that is Mm -hmm. um loosely sketched out and mostly improvised there's Uh, a lot of improv there's a lot of surprises some twists and turns some things we don't think are going to happen will surely happen uh we've asked the cast to jump in whenever they want they can do whatever they want uh, so, you know, we'll just see what's going on. Hey, I'm Annie, by the way. That makes me Levin. I was going to burp because I'm having I a thought beer. you were going to barf. No, I'm not going to barf. Oh, no, I realize I didn't do up my my uh, my Asian-inspired dress. We've got time. Oh, goodness. Okay, well, we got a lot of fun stuff, so let's do some of that fun stuff right now. Oh, my nose is running. Yo, what's up, Professor W? Uh, hello, hello. Um, it's Dean, correct? That's right. That's right. Three time now. Three time Dean. So nice to see you again, um, Dean. I I am so happy that we are we are live uh, actually broadcasting this 
class uh, for yeah. the Edison West Academy. Um, this is Acting 101, and uh, Dean is my uh, welcome. I, I, I'm, I'm so excited that you just... Give a little tongue-tied there, Professor. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, well, Dean, I, I'm mostly just waiting for you to show us. Uh, I was uh, waiting for the rest of the participants. What, we lost people? What's uh, going on? Well, Jane had um, Jane had uh, uh, babysitting issues, and Margot has uh, uh, dog issues, and and yeah, Margo. is no longer um, responding to my emails or texts. So it's just you, sir. It is just you. One on one, mano y mano. That's right, and I am ready. Um, I, I know. Uh, I know you. You told me you have your monologue prepared, and so I'm ready to have my ears and my soul tickled you're ready all right i mean if you want to jump right into it if yeah. you don't have any uh if you don't have any ideas for me before i'll just well, do it like i've been practicing it this is a found text is it not that's right yeah uh i uh they gave us uh they gave us ipads uh in here and uh the apple operating system the ios is a joke i got i got past it and i've been searching all over the internet I mean, this is a this is a public broadcast. And yeah. I'm very excited to hear your monologue. From the inside. Here we go. Shut the fuck up, Jimmy. Jesus. The guy sees me acting, all of a sudden he wants to do like pornos and stuff. All right. Contemporary monologue by an anonymous author. All right. All right. I'm gonna do the all right. Ah 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 ba 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 ka 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 ka. Hey, this is Frank. I just, um, I'm reaching out because I'm looking for a gig. You know, I got this, uh, you know, I'm a contractor and things get a little tight here in Bozeman and finally Dean, <laughs> closing us down. Dean, 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 be... Dean, What's up? Dean, I'm going to stop you there. It seems, uh, you're, I was in you're that shit. Of... What? I was in that shit. Did uh, you I feel? understand. Did you feel you did... Wait a moment. All right, Dean. Listen to me. You yeah. need to understand you are occupying a place of caricature and prototype and you are not speaking. I, I, I can tell you as the chief executive officer of the Smithson West Academy, my name is Smithson West, and I can tell you that you are false. I need you to look for something true. This is a class in acting power, not acting placeholder. All right. I can take direction. I can take direction. I, I think what you're saying is because this is a monologue of someone talking on the phone, I should be holding a phone. Is that what you're saying? Yes, that is what I'm saying. Okay. Pull the phone up to your blessed ear and show me what you have. Wow. You have one shot, sir. You are in the joint. Am I incorrect? <laughs> you're not incorrect. I mean, you, you don't want to be in here. So I'm trying to make it feel like you're not in here. You know what I'm saying? Dean, there's there's only a limited amount of time here we have before they, they move on to somewhere. Right, fine. You want me to take it from the top? You want? No. What, do you want? what do you want me no. to do? What do you want go me to do? Go to the place. Look inside your heart and go to the line that speaks most deeply to you. Okay. I got it. You ready? Show me. Here it is. Picking up the phone. Putting it in my ear. They're building all these houses for the fancy rich people. Come up here and they pretend they don't have the virus and then building hotels up there to call these guys essential, you know? So I can't compete with that because these guys, they're going up there. They got developers, you know, these freaking dirt bags and they're cheap. So they got these guys up there and they got like sucking, you know, the, the little porta potties up there, like one for 50 people and the guys are then in there. Like there's no fucking toilet paper, right? Because it's off the shelves. And these guys are in there like right now. We're square. You got like three of them in there like wrestling. Dean. Freaking square toilet paper. Some guys dropped Dean. this, this Dean. plastic. Dean. Fuck. Fuck. Dean. I'm in that shit again. That was some badass shit. Man, you got me right inside these guys. I don't know if I'm going to be able to come out. Oh, God. Dean. You you broke the internet, Dean. <laughs>
um, or I may perhaps my internet is breaking. Dean, listen. Yeah, I might have hacked into your shit too. Yeah, maybe so, but I'm okay with it. You can hack deep into my spine, sir, because you are a prodigy. I need you to do that bit again, except for this time. Go I'll rip your spine out. Uh, take a take a take a, a stance, an emotional stance. What does this character feel? Show me. Show 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 me. He's complicated, I, right? He's complicated. I don't want you to talk about it. I want you to be it, man. Show me a statue, a form of your emotional life. Do it. I'm gonna count to, to, to three. Should I, should One, I, two, don't no, just do it. Three. Yeah, like look, the developers cheap trying to save the gas. They throw these guys in the back of that pickup truck. Eight, it, ten of them. I've seen the. To say that I am just over here crying oh, oh, oh. Uh, at the emotion that is being. Delivered. That's what I'm talking about. Thank hey, you. who are you? Is, Thank you. I, hey. I was crying. I was crying. This is Mr. and Mrs. O'Connor. They are. Thank you so much for allowing us to show you a piece of Mr. art to uh, your community. Love that Asian inspired. Uh, Smithson, I think it's safe to say your class launched us. It's true. It launched us. Yeah. Well, yes, I, I am so thankful uh, that, that, time that we met in, in the strip mall. To uh, the Academy? At the, at the first iteration of the Academy. Namaste to the Academy. I mean, and acting is hard. We all know that, right? It's true. It's not that hard. It's one of the hardest things. No, it's not. And that monologue is choice. That's a choice monologue. Yeah. You loved it's it. Piece of, it's a piece of crystal truth. Are you two married? Or are we acting? <laughs> now that oh, is I namaste <laughs> to you. <laughs> The students have become the master. You know that, Dean? Put your fucking schlong away. This ain't no porno. Blessed be to Dean. And hey. To schlongs everywhere. I'm going places. I can't wait till I get out and go to an audition. Keep acting. Thank Keep you. Acting. Thank you. I'll to take everyone. that praise. I'll take that praise. Smithson West Academy is accepting new students. Um, uh, I, I, I put the the details in in your, Come in, us. In your chat box. In your yeah, chat I'll, box. I'll be with, I'll be with Smithson soon. I saw his uh, I saw his uh, his house on the uh, on the internet. <laughs> I'm gonna Are come you? over there when I get out, buddy. You're like a wild horse. Ex excellent. But you need well, to be sad. You need to be saddle broken. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah, well, that's uh, that usually happens about seven o'clock. Hey, they're calling the count. I gotta go. Levin saddle is is chrome. Okay, oh, thank you. Blessed be. Myths and West. <laughs> Transition music. Da -da, keep the energy going. He's getting better. He's getting better. Yeah. Cigarettes. We're trying to challenge you, Garrison. Show us how great you can be. Take it to the top. I'll get to the top. Well, I want max effort right now. Welcome the next act and whatever. Stop. Man, he's so sad. He's just like a kid. Yeah, he's like a kid. He's like one of our children he's that can't gonna, stop crying. Can't take a little bit of feedback. Just a little bit of feedback. One little note. The next time we see him, he's going to be naked in the bathroom, refusing to poop, and walking only around. Only coming out if he gets an ice cream cone. <laughs> While we're all trying to eat chicken noodle soup. True story involving Garrison. You guys acting's hard, am I right? It's so hard. But you know what what isn't hard? Being a single mom. Smooth. That's a smooth transition, right? Last week, the kid and dogs indulged in donuts while mom just wanted to get her flat screen hooked up. What will happen this week on Five Dogs, No Dad?
all started with a house, the cutest house in town. A mom and a dad and a dog and a kid. And soon there were more and more dads to be had. No one knew why. Mom was so glad. So... After the years went by, they found it was fun with dads and no dog around. It was a house and a mom and a kid and a dad and a dad and a dad and a dad and a dad. A lot of men to snog, cause it's five dads and no dogs. Oh, hello mom. You were just uh, you were just sleeping so soundly that I I decided to make the bed for you because I love you so much. No one's made a bed for me in years. Oh, beautiful. Oh. Well, I'll do anything I can to make your life better, including I love giving you. you a, oh, I love you too. Let me give you a big kiss. Mwah! Hey, sugar butt. Guess we learned how to vacuum for you. Right, I watched it on the YouTubes. And now I know how to vacuum. Wow, vacuums in prison. How impressive. Oh, beautiful. Oh, no, babe, I got out. I'm downstairs. Oh, oh my gosh. I love it. Can't wait to see you on the clean floor. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Looking forward to it, baby. Give me a little kiss. Mm. Oh, uh, <laughs> hi there. Listen, uh, I saw you were tired, so I thought I'd mix you up a little cocktail. That's right, it's uh, your favorite. I believe it's just vermouth. <laughs> oh, yes. I love it. I don't have to go up to the attic and drink a dusty bottle of wine anymore by myself. That's right. No, no, no dusty bottle of wine for you. Just this cocktail that I will forever shake into your mind. Now come here, give me a little kiss. <laughs> you feel good. <laughs> I uh, saw you sleeping so peacefully down there. I thought I'd fold the laundry, and then I saw your TV needed to be mounted, so I just wanted to take care of a few things. Hope that HDMI cord is extra long. <laughs> oh, it's plenty long. How about a kiss? Hi, honey. Ah, it's your husband. Uh, it's, uh, I just fixed the virus on your computer, got it off. And uh, oh, yeah, that thing's been there for years. Plenty of time for us to uh, I put your favorite gold blanket on the bed. <laughs> oh, the Midas touch. You always did have the Midas touch. Maybe we could uh, have a little fun tonight. <laughs> 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 yeah, love you. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh it's it was just a dream. Damn it. I, I guess uh ah, watch out dogs. I better go downstairs and make some dinner. Oh, what a dream. If only uh. <laughs> Oh. oh, a little head rush from that, from that dream I had. Oh boy. Whew, okay, gotta get the dinner on. Uh, maybe some grilled cheese. Yeah, that's right. Just get my knife. <laughs> oh, see what's uh, right in the fridge here. Ah, what's all these cans? So many, so many cans. <laughs>
curse you, Because it's five dogs and no dad. I hope she's okay. Hey, hey, Smith and West, you're still on. I know. Where did you find this diamond? This <laughs> goddess? I must, I, you must, must reach out to me and give me her contact. We will. We will. We will. We'll make sure she gets your contact number. What she's... was she doing with all those cans <laughs> in her Loves. oven? It's beautiful improvisation. Uh, but what a knife. She really made herself a real nice knife. That's a Big, beautiful knife made out of any kind of material. Uh, I'm getting some news from the chat room that we couldn't hear Levin during his dad bit. Oh. Just so everyone knows, there was he was obviously mounting um, a... Uh, mounting. Mounting the television. There was a lot of... Uh, innuendo. Innuendo about thick cords. Well, she... Because <laughs> he's got a great ass! And you've got your head all the way up it! Pacino, wait until the interview. We do have Al Pacino here. Okay, hey, you're both grounded. Everybody. Cigarettes, whiskey. Uh, that's that was just Garrison doing a funny voice. Uh, we, we didn't say earlier, but we do have a What's great special guest tonight, uh, and his name is Nick Armstrong. That's right. Uh, and his dad has also uh, been popping in and out of the video. So hopefully, he'll let Nick out of his room to do the interview, and then he can be grounded again. Nick's gotten in some trouble. Um, but uh, he's a wonderful friend of ours uh, and an all-around great guy. So uh, let's say hello to Nick Armstrong, everybody. Friend to planet Earth. Nick Armstrong. Everything nice, G. Ah. Was that your intro music or is Garrison doing his job? I think that's Garrison's doing his job. I did not do that. I'm not <laughs> professional. Probably Landon. He was probably Landon doing it then. <laughs> Hi, Nick. Hey, Nick. Hey, what's up, Annie and Levin? Hey, welcome to the Quarantine Comedy Hour. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. We're excited to have you. Mm -hmm. uh, people at home who don't know you are one stupid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because you literally know everybody. Hey, leave. Oh, no. Nick's dad. You I'm don't say so stupid sorry. about anybody. Dad. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm so sorry. Nick, Mr. did your dad just hit? Oh, wait, yeah. you hit your dad. I That's hit my dad. Fine. I hit my dad. Okay. Oh, That's thank God. Shit right there. <laughs> For the people at home that don't know Nick Armstrong. Uh, and the not stupid ones. And the not stupid ones. It's just that you haven't met him yet. Although oh. Nick is always on the road, traveling, meeting people, connecting communities. Johnny it's, Appleseed of Improv. He's the Johnny Appleseed of Improv. Sowing seeds. Uh, Nick has done a lot, you guys. He's done Camp a Improv lot. Utopia. Yep, Camp Improv Utopia. Has multiple camps annually uh, four in a normal camps? year. Is that four camps? Yeah, there's four. Where are your camps? I oh. know, but yeah. they don't. Hey, you know. There's, there's two in California. There's one in Cambria, it's our West Camp. And then you have the Yosemite Camp, which is near Yosemite. And then uh, in Pennsylvania, we have an East Camp. Uh, and then Ireland. What mm. happens at camp? What is Camp Improv Utopia? Uh, well, you have great teachers like yourself who teach at camp. I am teaching at camp this yeah. year. We'll if see. the virus doesn't <laughs> kill <our> camp. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's outdoors. That's what's going for. Um, so, uh, yeah, Annie's teaching at her East Camp, and she, they both taught at our West Camp. And um, so you get taught by master teachers, but it's not about just learning. It's about being together and uh, you also do like axe throwing and archery and it's canoeing fun. and the stuff you would do at a summer camp, only your adults. Mm -hmm. And you get and to do improv doesn't... and make each other laugh. Yes, exactly. It's really like, uh, uh, it's like the, one of the purest, like boil downs of what's great about improv community, like reduced and, and put like, it's a, an awesome experience for that. They're like, it's what you hope an improv community is like all the time that it's just like a bunch of adults being kind of like kids and also vulnerable and awesome and learning stuff and excited. And it's so fun. I love that you made that a recipe. 
We're not doing a commercial. It's just really is awesome. <laughs> Levin's like, well, you're going to take camp and you're going to reduce it and a nice reduction on that. Yeah. Then, just a little <laughs> camp reduction sauce <laughs> over a duck. Uh, sauce. <laughs> over a duck? <laughs> yeah. It's a duck uh but nick doesn't just do uh camp room no that wouldn't yet. that wouldn't be enough that wouldn't satisfy him <laughs> that's just like a little dick tease <laughs> <laughs> that's just his oh no his dad's coming back hey, mr armstrong i'm sorry my son to words like dick <laughs> i'm so sorry oh nick i now i understand why you didn't have sex until late in your adult <laughs> life I know. He wait, I have a lot of camp shirts. He wears the same shirts I do. It's really <laughs> you guys dress the same each day, yeah, hoping he, for a Freaky Friday moment. Yeah, he thinks he's an actor. Um, oh man, he should take some Smith and Wes, I guess. I know he. I, he watched. We have uh, room. Nick, <laughs> 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 oh, what else are you up to? What other things are you doing in the world? Um, I run Voodoo Comedy in Denver now. Uh, what? 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 Yes. Uh, so yeah, that's yeah. closed right now, but we're doing a lot of online stuff. Yeah, you're, yeah. On, you're online open. You're for doing business. a lot of online yeah, stuff. Doing... You got your, those master classes that I yeah. saw. Those yeah, we got a lot of master classes up. So it's kind of like camp online. And then um, uh, I perform at the Westside Comedy Theater with you guys for a bit in the county line and Erzik, Brian Erzik, uh, who's on there, and Landon. Uh, oh, yeah, knows? we're all on here. We're on here. Yeah. Oh, we're just, and also, now we're going to do a county line show. So, um, <laughs> Sorry, Tony. But some of the funnest shows I've had with, are with you two. And um, some of the most fulfilling shows, I should say. Oh. And uh, Is it but, that yeah. one where you and I kissed at the end? Oh, yeah. That's like every show. Uh, this is way too organized for a county line show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. County line shows like a fever dream. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what I'm up to. Just, uh, I love improv so much. You mm -hmm. gave me so much and I love it. Um, yeah. 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 What's the reason that you love improv so much? I love the people. I mean, the shows are great and the reward of like, you know, being in the moment and just like sitting in it and just like having to be vulnerable. But then it's also like, just the people like you guys that I get to be friends with for the rest of my life. And like the people that are involved are always such positive, wonderful people. Wouldn't you want to be around that all the time? Yeah. Like, yeah. especially like with all this, you know, negative stuff happening around us, the best thing in the world is like, Oh, I'm glad I chose improv. <laughs> like, <Thank> because <laughs> like, even though, you know, things are bad and they look, might look bleak. It's like, well, at least I got my friends and like these wonderful people who are so supportive. And like, improvisers like natural responses just to turn it into bits anyway. Yeah, uh, I know, right? So you're like, well, the Titanic is sinking, but <laughs> get a load of this. Yeah. What are the guys playing? The <laughs> what is that? What was between your legs? Uh, like one of the banisters. I don't know. Somebody just walking around. <laughs> Old wavy gravy showed up with the Titanic sinking. Uh oh. <laughs> Don't do sexual stuff on the television. Is this a TV? Dad. Oh, no. Was your dad on the Titanic? Yeah, he was. <laughs> That's, I apologize. That he that. snuck off over the women and children. He, he wore a wig. <laughs> He's like, he, he like has this, he always brings us with him because he thinks the ship's always going down. I mean, I, I like that he's prepared. <laughs> uh, Nick, what's a like, um, can you think of a like, just a really terrible moment you've had on stage? What's a really terrible moment? Oh, I, you might've been there. Do you remember? I don't know if you were there. Maybe Lane, I don't know. I was doing a show at the West Side and you I- got your period? What's up? Let him tell his story without a period joke <laughs> for once. Yeah. Then I had my period right on stage. Um, yes, that's what I thought. <laughs> I apologize, I, Mr. Armstrong. I'm so sorry. That's okay. It's a biological thing. It is, Mr. Armstrong. <laughs> He's fine with that. He, he likes anatomy. He's okay with it. Um, sorry. Uh, no, I, I guess it's an embarrassing moment. I sat on a chair and it fucking <laughs> broke. Well, I was not there. And I was literally like, well, I've got to lose weight starting tomorrow. Like, <laughs> you know, like, but like, 
This chair did not belong on stage. This thing looked rickety from the start. And I don't know why it wasn't like one of those regular, you know, chairs. It was like those like metal ones. Yeah, yeah I think those like Westside doesn't on. even use the the kinds that you would think would break. Wait, wasn't it the West Side or was it at I.O.? It wasn't. No, it was West Side for sure, and it was a long time ago. This seems like a trap someone set for you. <laughs> no, I seriously, it's like like uh, like the the owner's like, we'll test to see how he really does, and then like, but literally, it wasn't like sit on it slowly collapse it was like a cartoon like boom <laughs> is that a fat albert joke yes oh we're God. blowing all of our celebrity guests that are coming on <laughs> gosh but that one i guess that was the, the weirdest thing to happen i haven't like crapped my pants or stage or anything like that. fair yeah i, I don't nope. think i've oh i i've definitely peed myself on stage I've done. I've let a little tink out. When I was pregnant, I had a I had a a fair amount of uh, accidents on stage. I was not pregnant. I just pissed myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I think that's what we were after tonight. Just trying yeah. to reduce it down to a humiliating moment of adult. <laughs> <laughs> Urination. All right. <laughs> thanks all so again. much for joining us, Nick. Uh, no. Uh, what were you saying? I would do it all again to get back on stage. I'd pee, I'd I crash know, on a chair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, on yeah. stage. Mm. On stage. Ooh, that's the ultimate mm -hmm. boner. Can yeah. I oh. share a story? Yes. The third act of the Scottish play at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. <laughs> I passed a gallstone. <laughs> this is a legit story, Smithton? Of course it's a legit I'm story. Sniffed. I speak. I said Smithton, not Sniffton. Oh, you're wrong on all accounts. I can take your gallbladder off with like a, a, a fork that's been sharpened. No, so thank you. You need it out. I'll take it out. Smithin. Smithin, <laughs> says Garrison. Thank you, Garrison. Smithin. No, it's Smithlin. Smithlin. Now, Nick, you, like many, have had to recently get a quarantine haircut. Yes. <laughs> uh, we have a shot of you pre haircut. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I can't believe you found that. <laughs> we were I watching. Gave it to him. Oh, I gave Star it Star. to him, and I wanted them to see it. Damn. <laughs> All right. We were watching The Mandalorian. We uh, like, Nick Armstrong should have been cast. <laughs> <laughs> he would be so much better. But the guy kind of talked like well, he had like a couple of yeah, that guy uh Mark Boone, I looked him up. Uh uh anyway, he had like a couple of mannerisms that I was like, "Hey, holy shit." Like we made, we were like, "Yeah, I wish Nick would have been in this part." And then he started moving like he did some arm movement that I was like, "That looks like Nick." Like this thing that you do, you like you do <laughs> we were just like, "Oh my god, it's happening. We're turning him into Nick." Anyway, we might have had too much scotch. We had a lot of scotch. We had a lot of scotch. We had a lot of scotch. If if you were going to say that Levin looked like any celebrity, who oh. would you say he looked like? This is also a, a question to the chat. Oh, um 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 oh, if 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 uh, Benedict Cumberbatch had a mustache, I think it would be Levin. Oh, sure. I'll take it. Bender Bender Dick Cumber Bender Dick Bender If Dick Bender Dick Cumberbatch were a perv. I like that guy. He's a he's a very good actor and stop making fun of him. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Bender, Bender Dick. Dick. Bender Dick. Come batch. Come batch. <laughs> what about me? Oh, you're like uh, um, uh, Annie, little orphan Annie. Oh, weak. <laughs> weak business. Weak business. It's easy. You have red hair. Drink more cigarettes. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I like this. This is definitely little orphan. Uh, someone's asking, also. "What is voodoo comedy?" Yeah, what is voodoo comedy? Back on the rails. Uh, back on the rails. We're getting back on the rails. It's it, a comedy it's magic. New Orleans. <laughs> the train went careening way off the rails. <laughs> yeah. Skipped across wow. the river, and then we stuck it back on the other side. <laughs> Um, what is it? It's a comedy club, like any comedy clubs that do stand up and improv, mostly improv. 
and then uh, sketch and you do classes and it's like any like class best comedy. It's a, it's a theater like West Side Comedy or any of those. It's a, yeah. And it's located in Denver, Colorado. Denver's premier comedy this is experience. The, and you've been an artistic director of a theater. You performed mm-hmm. at theaters. You've taught at theaters. This is the first theater you've actually owned. Yes. It was uh, a great idea. And how, what great idea right now. It was a really good idea. You bullseyed it. Bullseyed. I told him not to do it. Mm, I well. said, don't do it. You were right, Mr. Armstrong. You should have listened to your dad. No one should open the theater. Uh, but we're all doing it. We're all doing it, though. And, and we're, we're going I'm, down you know the what? Titanic. I'm damn happy I did it, and I'm going to yeah. survive it, and we're going we're gonna to be We're going to survive it together. Yes. <laughs> oh, Smith did. Uh, Smith for just a second, popped in. S- Smithton. S- I don't know. Smithson. <laughs> Snifter. Smittix. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nick, we had a... a little work release there, Nick. What uh, What do you think? Bring me on? Be like the artistic director or something? Yeah, why don't you send me a tape? <laughs> <laughs> uh oh this is probably an awful thing to ask uh nick but uh as far as no i can't ask it i mean i want to know like what's, what's the worst submission you've ever gotten uh what just happened five seconds ago no I'm just um oh no I do, have a good one. I do have a good one this is kind of controversy one so like and you guys might remember this so I got an email. So we kicked this stand up out of the West Side when I was first there. It was like one of the first, like, this guy's a creepo type thing, right? And the West Side is a comedy theater that's located in Santa Monica, California, that Nick and Levin and I all used to work at together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a wonderful West Side. Wonderful place. Com. Great community, great people. Yeah. Anyways, back to the now stick it to him. We him out. It wasn't anything crazy. He just treated our employees bad and treated women badly, talked to them badly. So we're like, we've we don't need you around. That's these are our people. And so a year or a year and a half later, I get an email. Oh, sorry, excuse me. So I emailed him that he couldn't come back. And he wrote, and I was brand new. He's like, and I don't know you, but you're a fat mother, blah, blah. And like just cussed me out in this email. And I'm like, great to that know. Should, Thank you. That should bring him back in. I, well, I, I always love confirmation of like, you got my email. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, but like you. So like a year and a half later, I get two pitches from the same, this guy. <laughs> and he he's pitching these two shows that were not reinventing anything. Like it was like a stand-up show with people in it. You're like, okay. Um, and, and all I did for the answer was forwarded him his email that he sent me a year ago. <laughs> it was fucking the best thing ever. And I didn't get a response. I was just like, I for I all I didn't say anything. Just forwarded that email that he sent me. Call me like a fat fuck or something like that. And I was like, we don't forget. We don't forget. We don't forget. It's there. It's a very small I, community. Did it's he a, possibly it. double down and now send you a like double fat fuck response? Yeah, no, nothing. I think he's like, oh, that guy remembers me. It's like, ah, yeah, I think I'm going. Me. Well, you. <laughs> I got some other shit to say about you. Uh, the worst, the like worst pitches I get though, honestly, are like, "Hey, I'm I'm thinking of doing this like cool new thing." It's like I get like a bunch of comics, and then like we do it, I like we do a show, and it's called the Stand Up Hour. And I need and I need oh. way too much time. Yeah. I need three hours, three times a week. <laughs> but yeah, the the uh, that kind of stuff is 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 funny to me. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Nick. You're Thank the best. You, Nick. Oh, I love you guys. Thank you. We are so excited to have you on the show tonight. Uh, and we hope you check in. And What about me? Oh, Hi, and Mr. You Armstrong. Too, Mr. Armstrong. Thank you so much. You've been a valuable addition to the show. Oh, thank you. It looks you like a Ricky Gervais character. <laughs> it does look like a Ricky Gervais character. That That's one all I did. That was like Dexter. Are we having a laugh? No, <laughs> not having a laugh. <laughs> We got we've gone way too deep yeah. on Ricky Gervais during this quarantine. Time. Well, we, we've yeah, we've been watching a lot. Yeah, uh, but it was so awesome to have you on the show. It's Nick. great to see you. It was really great to have you. you guys. Uh, you guys, if you want to know anything more about Nick or the things that he's up to across the country and even across the world, because he does have this Ireland. Yeah, we're, camp. we're wide, uh, we're wide, Mr. Worldwide. You can find him at. <laughs> Improv, at Improv Utopia. Utopia. 
Impactopia.com, uh, voodoo.com, NickArmstrong.com. All the things. <laughs> we just talked over while he was saying the important information. <laughs> you can find me. Just Google me. <laughs> just Google him. There's going to be so many great pictures. Just yeah, so you'll many. find nothing, not me at all. <laughs> yeah, it's going to find you. I Googled your shit. I'll oh. find you. Thanks, Dean. <laughs> I'm going to give that guy a slot. He's got a lot of hustle. Yeah, he's got a lot of hustle. And I, I, I can I can appreciate that. Oh. Hello, Paige. <laughs> oh. I, I wish oh, I could that's go frightening. to improv camp. I wish I could go to improv camp. <laughs> oh, poor, that poor woman. <laughs> She's just laying there on top of her dogs. <laughs> <laughs> her dogs. You know what? I'm going to comp her. I didn't do it. That she gets comped. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, buddy. Thank you so much. Stick uh, around. Yeah, I'll stick play with us. Play with us. You know, speaking of uh, just these, um, uh, of like uh, of bad submissions. Oh, yeah. Although I wouldn't qualify this as a bad submission. It's not a bad submission. But this is our first, uh, the next bit, the only transition is that this is our first uh, uh, submitted to last best comedy for use. This is uh, submitted to last best comedy. I don't know comedy. how better to set it up other than to let you know that this is. It this, was a it was a voicemail an audition tape that was left to us as an audition tape, and we just want to celebrate Thank our you. first submission. Thank you, Bozeman. Thank you, Bozeman. Sidebars by Frank. Hey, this is Frank. I just I'm I'm reaching out because I'm looking for a gig. You know, I got this. You know. I'm a contractor, and things get a little tight here in Bozeman. And finally closing us down the central anymore, or we used to be, you know, but they shut that shit down. So a little frustrating. Used to be going up to Big Sky, but I get it, too. I mean, like, go up there, and you got the fucking Yellowstone Club up there. They're building all these houses for the fancy rich people come up there and pretend they don't have the virus and then building hotels up there to call these guys essential you know so I can't compete with that because these guys are going up there they got the developers you know these freaking dirt bags like they're cheap so they got these guys up there and they got like sucking you know the little porta potties up there like one for 50 people and the guys are in there and there's no fucking toilet paper right because it's off the shelves and these guys are in there like right now we're square you got like three of them in there like wrestling freaking square toilet paper or some some guys dropped his gum in the damn plastic journal there and pick them back up they don't care they're tough guys right and so you know crown around these trailers up there and then the other day what do they do age yeah look the developers cheap trying to save gas they throw these guys in the back, that pickup truck, eight of ten of them. I've seen it, in the back of the pickup truck, under an hour. Then they stopped the Mini Mart, and everybody like a PBR and a corn dog. Put the top back over, and these guys are going down Gallatin Canyon, can back and forth, you know, going around the turns, slash around like a freaking kiddie pool party with the Laffy Jump Off. And right? And so too should happens, you know. The little fluorescent faster come off like a freaking Miley Cyrus suit. And these guys, friend then, you got there, you know. You know, you got like beards and long and other hair. Like always, like freaking, you know, face to ask dreadlock party in there and everybody wanders. You know, yeah, they got the coven, right? And they're bringing it back to Bozeman. Just fucking pisses me off. And Thursday, like, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I just venting, just venting. All right. Have a good weekend. Whoa. You guys, sidebars by Frank. Thank am I you, right? Frank. Ah, oh, what a dream. Uh, and if you like sidebars by Frank, just know that we've got a lot of other submissions from Frank that will be coming in the weeks. 
but we would love some submissions from, from you. you. Yes. So here's a here's a little proposal to you guys. Uh, if you're at home and you're watching this and you're like, I want to be a part of uh, Quarantine Comedy Hour. What could I do? Can I do a bit? Uh, yes, you can do a bit. No, what can I do? What can, what I, can do? I do? What can I do? You could do a bit. Stop it, complaining, dweeb, and do a bit. Do whatever you want. Or... Um, we can give you this little challenge. Uh, mm, you, whoa. you saw how desperate mom was to have an actual boyfriend. So, um, if you think that you could, uh, supply mom with, a, a man or a woman, uh, as part of a dating app that, uh, maybe, uh, mm. she could, uh, get to know a little bit better, we'd love a little submission, um, okay. about your, uh, Let's- your get person. This mom matched up. Let's get this mom matched up with uh, you or a character that you've created in your mind. Uh, you can send us a, f- a 15 second video. Your say your name's Slater and you're watching or whatever. <laughs> say your name is Thick Paul Rudd's wife and you're watching. Then you can uh, do a character. Send us a video to lastbestcomedy at gmail.com um, and we'll hopefully integrate it into a future show. Yeah. So, uh, but if you have another submission and you want to do that, that's fine too. You guys like I'm taking care of business? This is the most business we've ever done in a show. I love business. Now, to bring it down heavy and hard, mental health is something. It's something that's facing all of us. We're all trying to stay sane We're right all now. facing mental health. I'm crying a lot during the days. Are you crying at all? The purpose of this show is not to air our business. Sometimes he goes off and I think that he's crying. I've been mowing the lawn a lot. <laughs> and I'm fine. He's okay. That's what he says, at least. He says he's okay, and I have to take that because Anyway, mental health is something that exists, and... Sometimes you need help with mental health. Right. And so we've brought on two specialty doctors. That's right. To answer your questions during this time of quarantine. We'd like to give you a mental health check-in. So if you're on the chat stream and you have a question for our Mm -hmm. special guests, Mm -hmm. you can go ahead and pop that over and I will uh, ask them. We have some other questions that have been submitted prior, uh, and we're asking our cast as well if they have any questions for our guests. But That's let's right. welcome Dr. Steve McKay and Dr. Kelly Martin. Ah, uh, welcome. welcome. <laughs> Smoke more cigarettes, drink more whiskey. Yeah. No, that is a fallacy, actually. During quarantine, you should not smoke more or drink more. That's Aww. actually rule number one in mental health. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to uh, give you guys um, our um, our first question, uh, as seen as though I can see that your names actually begin with doctor. Um, uh, so I trust you on this one. Yeah. Uh, so we'll give you our first question, then we'll leave you to answer it, and then we'll see if we've got some other questions or if our cast has got Community some Community submitted question number one. Um, how do I know if I'm developing a drinking problem mm. during stay at home? And does it count? That's a really good question. Um, Steve, I, I think that uh, we're all having issues with dealing in this quarantine time. Um, and a lot of people are turning to alcohol and other things. As you said, it's, it's not good to do that type of stuff during quarantine. Um, how do we know if we have a problem, though? That's that's a mm. really good question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, what I teach my students in class is um, just a, a quick rule of thumb is, um, have you ever woken up and every entrance into your body is sore? Mm. Then you probably have a drinking problem because somebody has invaded every entrance to your body. And that means you don't remember it, which means there was probably some alcohol involved. Um, and I think you have, that means you have a drinking problem. I don't understand what it means. Does it count? Right. But that was in quotes. Yes. It yeah. The quotes don't count. help me. What does that mean? Uh, well, does it, does it count? I, I, are, we just, on, are we, are, are we, we on a time those... out during quarantine or where yes. we can do whatever we want to and have no consequences for our actions? Oh, mm-hmm. oh, um, yes. well, I'm a guy, I'm a white straight male so i have consequences for every one of my actions so i'm gonna 
I'm going to turn this over to uh, Dr. Martin. She actually would be better to speak on this. Uh, yes. Well, you know, normally uh, I always turn to my daddy if I have any problems, um, but he has disappointed me uh, quite a lot. Um, but, you know, I think, does it count? I Does it count when somebody spikes your drink at a party? Um, as mm. I, you know, I, I mm. don't know. Maybe it That's does. a great... That is a great point, because if you remember in um, the original Beverly Hills 90210, Brandon's girlfriend, Emily, spiked his drink with euphoria yes, at a club, right. and he didn't know about it, and he had the best time of his life until he went back the next day and saw that his Mustang had been totaled in the garage, and he had to tell his dad and yeah. uh, you know work extra shifts at the Peach Pit to get, to get the, right. the Mustang fixed back up. Just so, ask mm-hmm. Jim and Cindy, does that count? I, I mean, I think... I think the answer is yes, it counts. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Jim would say it counts. I think Cindy would be a little bit more lenient because she was always wearing high-waisted shorts, which lets me know that she's a loose woman. Yeah, she she was just loving. She was the loving side. Jim was the heavy hand. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 wait a minute. High-waisted shorts equals loose woman? Well, they're easy to Uh, get into, Annie. Exactly. Easy on, easy off. That's not easy to get into. Oh, you put at the bottom. Oh, I right guess up. you put. Up, never oh. mind. You can go up the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You're big concerned. I mean, hey, I can you see- let the? Could you let the expert speak, yes. please? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I'm not even sure what ethnicity you are with that shirt you're wearing. <laughs> yes, I mean it, it's almost like that time Emily Valentine went mm. overseas for her degree in marine. Uh, what was it? Biology was that? Was she mm-hmm. doing? She was doing it. Mm-hmm. So she, it was after she and Brandon had reconnected. Right. I, I feel like she might have been wearing something similar to that, Annie. So well done. Yeah. Um, we have a question from the chat. Mm-hmm. Uh, it comes from Thick Paul Rudd's wife. Oh. Of course. Uh, um, it says, my husband got a quarantine haircut, and now he looks like a really, really old Marine. And I feel like I'm married to a stranger. Uh-huh. Do we need counseling? Hmm. Sure. Wow. Haircut sure. question. Haircut yeah. question. Dr. Ooh. Martin, would you like to jump on this or should I? Um, well, I, I mean, I know that I've been through my fair share of bad haircuts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I had the short hair. I had the long hair. I had the bangs. Right. I mean, um, I was like a different person every season. So, um, you know, I get it. You're a stranger. Um, but I, counseling? I'm not sure. I yeah, see, I don't think they need counseling uh, yeah. because if memory serves, I believe Steve Sanders tried on six or seven shirts for the first day of school in the pilot episode of Beverly Hills 90210, and then he actually settled on a pretty gross um, button down that good. he went to to Beverly uh, to West Beverly High, excuse yeah. me. And I think everybody knew that he was still Steve Stan- Sanders. So even though he had a different shirt on, in this case, vis-a-vis, ipso facto, yeah. a haircut, mm-hmm. he was still Steve, Steve Sanders. So thick Paul Rudd's wife maybe should just get off of his ass. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Excuse uh, my excuse my language. Dr. McKay, that's a, for your pretty passion. You, uh, you I, I, have a, I have a question. I, I have a question. Landon, can you just turn on your screen real quick, buddy? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, hi. A big fan. Uh, first time, long time. Um, listen, I... I have a I have an issue. I've been doing a lot of these Zoom calls uh, mm-hmm. for work, and um, what happens whenever you have a you know a, a business partner? Or this 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 question is actually directed to Doctor uh, Kelly Martin, uh, Doctor Martin, big fan. Um, what happens when you have like a business partner who uh, might show up as if they're dressed for a, a third grade picture day, or um, you know some some kind of you know, uh, they're not really taking it seriously, right? Um, what what happens then? Thank you. I'll take my question off the air. Oh, okay. Um, thank you. Um, always great to meet a fan. <laughs> um, so it sounds like the issue is that you guys are taking things very seriously, and there's that one person in the group, a, a business partner, who is not taking it seriously. And and what what happens? Who's the clown? in the group and uh, you know you were talking yeah, about wearing like Sanders. wearing like a jc penny shirt and maybe a clip on tie i mean who knows okay okay mm-hmm. yeah uh-huh so um i i i get that and i i think maybe we take it back to steve sanders i mean he was always kind of the clown around guy um at west beverly and beyond right i mean uh even when he started the beverly hills beat 
Um, you know, he was a real prankster around town, you know, and, and he's a real lovable person. I mean, I found myself at the very end of this, this the whole series really loving what Steve's character was and really like he was one of my favorites, I think. So I guess I would say to you, um, give this guy a break. I mean, give him 10 seasons. Maybe he'll turn out to be a real Steve Sanders. Can I offer just a counterpoint to that, Dr. Martin? Yeah. Not to mean to, to step on your toes, yeah. but oh. um, if you recall that um, uh, the show, Beverly Hills 902 and 0, made a big deal of trying to make Donna Martin's character worthy of right. anything because she was a total zero. So if you remember, she was dyslexic and she got drunk on a, a prom okay, night and she yeah. shouldn't have been allowed to graduate. She shouldn't yes. have been allowed to graduate. Oh, you and I differ on this. Differ. No, um, no, and what they what they decided upon was some shitty uh, Donna Martin designs, which were just awful clothes rack full of just Ooh. garbage designs to make Donna Martin feel worthy. So let me ask you this, Landon. Maybe this is a cry for help from that person mm -hmm. because Donna Martin was just a worthless character that they just perpetually jammed down the viewer's throat for 10 goddamn seasons and made her <laughs> just 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 trying to fulfill some sort of hole left by her dad you are um, so right dr thank Steve. you thank you <laughs> Yeah, so don't, so, so don't, right. she might be a Donna Martin, which is you just need to know that after this person ends that Zoom call, they won't ever act again, okay, because they're uh, untalented. Dr. McKay, just a couple of things real quick. Mm -hmm. One, we have, Mr. Armstrong's on the show, and you're using a lot of curse words. You're right, I apologize. Uh, but he does have a question. Um, Mr. Uh, Armstrong does? Uh, yeah, Nick's father has a question. Okay. I got a couple questions. First, where did you learn all that garbage language? And second, I'm having trouble with my son. He wants to be an artist, and I don't know how to connect oh. with him. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'll just I'll jump in right here. Language language silently in my Steve. own basement. I, I would just say, what are you doing wrong, uh, Mr. Armstrong? Because you remember the parents caused a lot of problems, except for Jim and Cindy, of uh, Steve Sanders' dad was a serial cheater, right? Kelly's dad never showed up. Never okay? showed up. Donna's dad, I think, was fine, but Donna's mom cheated she on cheated him in the episode him. where they found Color Me Bad at the yeah. Beverly Hills Wait. Hilton yes. and had just an awful scene trying to make, again, Donna Martin seem like a worthy person when they just sort of should have had her as some sort of teen pregnancy dropout character. Steve, but oh Steve. no, we got to jam Donna Martin okay, down our throats Steve, for 10 Steve, seasons. Steve. 243 episodes. Hey, Dr. McKay, Dr. Okay. Martin's yes. trying to talk a little. Excuse we get me. that you hate Donna um, Martin. We yes. Excuse me. Uh, Dr. Martin, I apologize. Yes. Uh, and I just would like to remind you there was, uh, as Jim and Cindy were not perfect. I mean, they did move to Hong Kong and then Jim was very obsessed with his work. Um, he put, they pretty much abandoned the kids uh, in, in their dire most time, um, right when they're graduating from college. I mean, it was, it was ridiculous. Um, so I, I think all the parents on there really struggled some. Uh, I know all about this is a it. I know all about abandonment. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. This is a tough time, so I'm going to cut you some slack. But don't you ever go after Jim, okay? Oh. Don't you dare. Okay, Steve, I'm sorry. What I'm happens apologize. if your fucking cellmate won't put his schlong away? Oh, uh, you don't have to answer that one. <laughs> No, I think Dr. Martin, I, I can answer it if Dr. Martin would like to. Uh, we're talking about schlongs now? Is yeah, schlongs. Um, Someone you know won't put their schlong away. Let's, yeah, okay, um, well, let's frame it more like a real question instead of just an angry outburst. What if someone you're quarantined with is walking around all day with their schlong out and they won't put it away? I, sure. I mean, Dr. Steve, I feel like this is a real easy one for you because uh, yeah. Miss, Miss uh, Donna Martin. Uh, yeah. yeah I, I the like tease Donna Martin. Yep, yep. yep. Right? Yeah. Drag David through, I don't know, seven seasons without giving him anything. Then she decides to give him something and that, that weird teddy that she's wearing it's with 35 terrible. candles lit it up around the terrible. room. She's going to burn down the goddamn beach oh house. Oh my God, she was like... Right. You know she wasn't good. Right. Donna Martin was a Strong donut. Oh, it was terrible. I, I am absolutely in agreement. That was the worst lose your virginity scene ever. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Listen, we've all lost our virginity in yes. horrible ways. Ugh. Right.
I mean, David lost it in a limousine with Ariel. Well, Ariel, now listen, Ariel was pretty smoking, okay? But she did give him crabs. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Never trust a manager for baby face. <laughs> I'm not sure if intern Garrison's lost his virginity, so let's not try and make him feel bad about it. Oh, ooh. Ooh. sorry about that. Sorry, no, Garrison. I, I think uh, these, thing, yeah. these, uh, these, these answers have been really helpful. Uh, yeah. I, I can't help but notice that we're talking a lot about Beverly Hills now to one but I guess it's, a, we? it's, it's, I guess it's applicable hmm. to all situations. So, um, doctors, would you recommend, uh, as a means of, uh, you know, affordable therapy, perhaps just watching Beverly Hills 90210? Uh, I, yeah, I, I would put a, a big stamp on that advice there, Levin. Way to go. Yes. I mean, I, we've got, the thing is, is we've got uh, some other people who are ask, uh, wanting to ask They're lining questions. up. They're, we're just lining up here. We've got questions from the chat. I've got a text question. Yes. I don't, we don't have to, you know, we can come back again. We don't have to blow yeah. this whole episode. Beverly Hills is on Hulu, but I will we'll say this. Blow the whole episode. Yes. Well, sorry. Uh, ruin, use up the time in the whole episode. Listen, listen. Okay. I know what's going on. Okay. What do you, you want us to analyze you? Great. Are you Brandon and Kelly? Are you Brenda and Dylan? Oh. Are you are you David and uh, David Donna? And Donna, do you want us to give you want us to give it to you no. straight? Yeah, huh? tell us who Stretch? we are. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I I think uh, I, they're kind of giving me a Colin and Kelly vibe, actually. Ooh, Colin the drug dealer. He turns Colin? out to be a drug dealer. He was a drug Whoa! Dealer, I have something I have to tell you. What is it? I'm a drug dealer. That is it. a rough it. diagnosis, Dr. Martin, but God I'm bless sorry. you. sorry, I call it like I see it. I was thinking you were more like Nat in the Peach Pit. Oh, and Joni. Oh. Wait, and one wait, of us is are, the Peach Pit? Yeah, one yeah. of us is the Peach Pit. and one. Well, of I would oh, say I if I had to give you a diagnosis, Annie's obviously Nat. Uh, uh, well-connected, has been doing this for a long time, very well-liked, and Levin's obviously a peach pit, just sort of, just, just sort like of four place. walls, just like a place well, for people everyone to go comes to. together, like uh -huh. sort of the hub of everything. It is yes. true. But really, if you took out the food, people would just come in anyway, because it's no, just four walls. You just provide shelter. Well, sure, if we, you know, took out your tongue, you couldn't talk, so. Oh, now we're taking out my tongue? I'm just Jesus. saying. Okay. You're such a All peach right. pit. You know what, you're Donna Martin. Dr. What? Steve. Yeah. Dr. Steve. And Dr. I don't Martin. use that term lightly. I don't, don't use that you term call lightly. my husband Donna Martin. Inappropriate. 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 Uh, well, when we did first have sex, he did wear a teddy, and there was a lot of candles. I, I lit a few too many candles. Oh. Yeah. Let you set off a, a some sort of smoke detector. Maybe the neighbors called the, the cop. Uh, well, did you get pregnant like did Andrea? Did you get pregnant it? right away like Andrea? No, because I ripped all the batteries out because it was making that chirping sound. So there were no smoke detectors. Smart oh, just like the uh, fraternity house yes, where Kelly got really? burned oh. being in the basement with trying to stuff a hot towel with that lesbian chick that was coming on to her while Brandon was visiting with Emily Barrett right, up McCarrie. in San Francisco. Oh all right, we got to cut you off. This oh has been God. wonderful. Oh Thank you God. so much for this mental health check-in. Now I'm mad. Yes. All right. Great. You got us all fired up. All right, I'll never get over that, Emily. We'll have you back in a future episode. All right. Let's all just pull out and have a drink that doesn't count. <sighs> okay, you know what I need? The show is stressful. I think I need to eat something. And I wanted to make a oh, grilled treat. Oh, I can't trees. believe soup didn't hold up. Okay, so here's the thing, everybody. I like to have... A soup in the fridge. This is a at new thing time. she's saying all the time. I don't know where it came from. <laughs> Real Levin to the universe thing. Annie keeps saying this sentence. I, I just like to have a soup around all the time. I want to have a soup in the fridge. It's a low calorie way for me to stay. She never said this before. Like I can. And I then can quarantine have... hits, and now she says it and is making soups. A lot. I've got to have a soup in the fridge. We're out of hey, you put some. You put some chicken bones in a pot. Now you're cooking a stew. That's uh, another celebrity. What's Carl it? Weathers from oh, Arrested Carl Development. Weathers. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. <laughs> the but sound I samples only make sense when they explain themselves. <laughs> <laughs> oh! You guys, we're coming up on the end of the show, but before we do, we've got to have a snack. 
Mm-hmm. And so, last week... We left we- you on a bit of a cliffhanger. Two weeks ago, we left you on a bit of a cliffhanger when Garrison was making us a grilled cheese. Cooking with Garrison. But he ran out of cheese. And he had to go to the store. And we just don't know what happened. And so we've asked him to come back. Let's see what's happening. Let's cook something with Garrison. <sighs> Hi, uh, Annie and Levin and uh, everybody else. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. Um, when last we talked, I was running into the dark with a knife. Trying to find some cheese. <laughs> I was just trying to... That's all I was trying to do. I was just trying to, you know, cook something nice, cook something everyone, something easy that everyone can enjoy. But of course, does that <laughs> does that go to plan? Yeah, yeah, of course it does. No, of course it doesn't. No. So I couldn't find any cheese. So I I told one of the production assistants to give me his car, one of from the set of Garrison Cooks. And I just started driving. <laughs> and I'm pulled over now. I I really I really wanted to just uh, have like a lighthearted segment, you know, just show people like like just those little things you can make to eat that make you happy, you know that hold these memories of, of better times. But I, all I've been doing, all I've been doing is sitting here thinking about like, wh- where, where do all the pennies come from in the cars? We, we, we collect so many pennies and we put them into the pockets of our cars. Like, like someday uh, the heavens are gonna open up and they're gonna be like, how many pennies does everybody have in their cars? Like, that. it's just, and, <laughs> I, I mean, look at this. Look at this. Look, look how many knives I have now. <laughs> this is all I have to show for it. It's two week, this is two weeks of knives. And I got, I got some Band-Aid tough strips because when the going gets tough, the tough get tough strips. Just in case, uh, you know, it's a lot of knives in a car uh, just out in the open in the passenger seat. I'm going down the freeway. Um, but I, I don't know, like, if you, let's just, all right, let's just make a caprese salad. Um, so basically you're, you're going to want to get some mozzarella, like some really fresh, soft mozzarella. So let's say this is the mozzarella and then you're going to want to find a nice cheese knife. And none of these are cheese knives. Well, these are cheese knives so let's just say this is a cheese knife and you're going to want to slice the mozzarella into like discs and uh once that's all sliced up what you're going to do is you're going to toss together uh i like a nice spring mix or maybe something with uh pea shoots in it um and you're just gonna <laughs> you're just gonna toss those together something like that and then uh let's say you got uh, you want to get like aroma tomato <laughs> and you're gonna get a get a nice vegetable knife for that uh, I'm just gonna use the caprese because like who cares at this point but uh, you're gonna cut up the Roma tomato um, and you're gonna put that on top of the greens and then you're just gonna put a little bit of like a maybe a balsamic drizzle or just olive oil is good too and you're gonna salt and pepper it and then, then you're gonna put the mozzarella on top um and maybe a little like a few sprigs of basil or something this is the basil you know you put the basil on top and then that's basically it but mm. that seems really good garrison that sounds really good garrison hey all those knives stacked together look like a delicious caprese salad yeah <laughs> Hey, just, buddy, that looked you. great. That's really good. Thank that looked you. like a really good one. Thank you. I hope everyone uh, learned a lot, and I encourage you all to get out there. You know, try. try I can other only. Herbs. I can only speak for myself and for Annie, uh, and say that we learned a lot. I. I mean, I. I'm really hungry. 
uh, can I? that soup. It's because I ate that soup. But also, this knife salad looks awesome. Yeah. What? Uh, are, have you been pulled over? For two weeks? I'm just, I'm just, no, I'm just, no, I'm just on the side of the highway right now. Oh, okay, you off. weren't pulled over by a cop because you're white. No, no, no. No. <laughs> of course, no. Yeah, you know, he wouldn't pull you never, over because you're white. So I just wanted to make sure. I got, I, I look, search my phone. I have nothing to hide. I'm good. No one will search your phone. Crimes. Okay, free pass. Look into my Google Drive. Hmm. I don't. I'm, I'm white. There. What? Hey, do you need a dad? I don't need a dad. Dad's Mr. Armstrong. That's really nice. What am I gonna cook with a dad? I don't know. Dad, dad eos. That sounds good. Dad, dad the. Uh, Rolls. A minute. Well, I just, I don't know. I just think you're an upstanding kid, and I think that you can cook real good stuff. Hey, Garrison, that's a pretty good offer. You never know what you can make with a dad. Yeah, I don't like. I need a dad. Son. My son's an idiot. So I, I, need need I, I definitely. Oh no, dad! I definitely need a dad, and I like knives. So, just letting you know that. And yeah. I too been on the side of a highway crying and wishing for a delicious caprese salad, but DM, well, D, just DM me, okay? I don't know what that means, but I will do it. She sure. could be my mom and you could be my dad. And then you could help me learn how to cook before the next episode. Garrison, I think that Mr. One... Armstrong keeps popping in and out and in and out. <laughs> Oh. Hey, Garrison. Two things. One, yeah. I think that that mom might be a little too old for you, and I think she might oh. want to. She might want to have a sexual relationship. So just be careful if you go down that oh, route. Be careful with yourself and with her. Okay, I'll take She's that. She's had a hard time too. She's had a hard time. That's... And maybe you guys can be band aid strips for each other, and maybe you can't. I don't know, but. You know, I think just expanding your knowledge of what you can possibly cook with a dad, what you can make with a dad would be great. Like, let's just give you a little project. Yeah. We got a show oh, next yeah. week. Sub sandwiches or something. Yeah. Saltine, yeah. saltine sandwiches. Oh, that sounds great, boy. Oh, this oh, is God. really. This is going fast and great. Crush up some barbecue chips. On the ice cream. On the ice cream. We finish each other's sentences. Sentences. <laughs> uh, well, Garrison, when you get your head on straight, we'd love you to make another dish for us. And, buddy, you if you've been driving for two weeks, you got a long way to get home. So we're going to need yeah, you I to know. turn that car around and head on back because that production assistant is probably just waiting probably at your house. still waiting for their car. Yeah. He could be in real danger. You're needed. You we need needed. you here. Okay, I'll come back. So reach into the pockets of your car and come on home. It's a lot I of pennies. A, I got a couple of pennies to help right. me out. I think those are nickels. <laughs> those are nickels and dimes, That's buddy. That's not a penny. <laughs> those represent a lot of pennies. Oh, there's, there, one. there's one. Is that I got a, a keychain ring? <laughs> I got a keychain. Just think what you could make with a keychain ring right, and a couple of him. pennies. I hope I hope he's all right. Oh man, man, that salad looked good. That did look good. It was all shiny. <laughs> Whew. Ah, uh, what do you need a cheese knife for when you have caprese? So next time you're thinking of cutting cheese and you don't have cheese, a cheese knife, you can just grab some of your caprese salad and cut your cheese with that. And I think that's a great tip. Yeah. And that's what the last best comedy quarantine hour. What? Did I say that wrong? Quarantine Comedy Hour is the name of our show, brought to you by Last Best Comedy. I've had one beer, and I'm already feeling tears. Last Best Comedy, giving you just the tip. Uh, yes, giving you just the tip. That is our motto. Mm -hmm. Light uh, we pay tip, our wake dip. staff well. So, <laughs> uh, But you guys, that is it for tonight. We came in under an hour and a half. Woo! Fear, fear, fear. Fear, fear. Fear, fear. If, if if intern Garrison was not sitting... Well, us, maybe Carl Weathers or one of our other uh, disc jockeys could... Give us an air horn. Can we hear some air horns? 
That's better. That's better. Bow, you guys, we're going to be, be back next week. Uh, with Reloaded, fresh stuff. Uh, and I just want to remind everybody, if you do have a submission for Quarantine Comedy Hour that you would like to us to put up, you can email us at lastbestcomedy.com. If you'd like to do um, a dating profile for uh, the mom from Five Dads, No Dogs, or what's the other What's the other title? Five Dogs, No Dad. Five Dads, No Dad. Five dogs, no dad. Five dads, no dad is uh, yet to be done. He's looking for love, uh, and we want to be that on lover. next week's five dads, no dad. <laughs> it's five dads who all don't have a father figure in their life. <laughs> Coming together. And they're just talking about how hard it was <laughs> to get to this position of of importance in life without a father figure of their own to guide them there. Five dads, no dad. Five dads, no dad. We'll be coming next week. And if you'd like to be one of the dads, you go ahead and make a submission tape about that. A submission tape. <laughs> AKA just email us like a video that you make that's like 15 seconds long. Anyways, let's welcome everybody back. Nick Armstrong, Paige Johnson. Uh, Ken We got Davis. Ken Davis. Molly Hannon. Landon, Landon Kirksey. Brian Erzik. Bennett Drozik. Bennett Drozik. Look at this. Look and, at this, Cass. And Nick's Mom. so bored. Mr. Yeah, Armstrong. Mr. Ar and Mr. Anyways, Armstrong. Daddy back. Armstrong. Nick Armstrong. Me and Paige Johnson. Oh, and we've uh, Garrison. Ken DJ Garrison is back. Molly DJ Garrison, can Landon you Landon possibly Kirksey. take us out Ryan with some, uh, with some Drum Drum take out Drum music Drum. for us to all? Play us out. Us. Play us what out, Garrison. Nick's Mom. so bored. Mr. Armstrong, 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 Mr.